Crap. What's up guys, how are you doing? Today in this cultural fair I'm going to talk about the eccentric Maori culture. The auto it is full of details, it's not much commented or even known by many people. But first of all we need to answer a question. What is culture? If you research the meaning of culture in Google, the first meaning that we will find say that culture is the action, process or effect of cultivating the land, plowing and cultivation. Yeah, I don't think we are talking about that. <laughs> Culture corresponds to a set of habits, beliefs and knowledge of a people or a certain artistic group, literally, dramaturgical, musical, derived from the plastic arts, etc. That somehow cultivates an aesthetic pattern. The culture influences the characterization of a people, their way of lives and behaviors that even without intention show the influences of culture in people's lives. Culture is also shaping up to the centuries, changing its characteristics. Because of that, so many ancient cultures today are no longer the face of a people. But what about the sociologic vision? Culture in sociology represents a set of knowledge and traditions of a people. These are produced by the social interaction between individuals in a community or society. Based on human needs, patterns and behaviors are shaped and created that generate a certain social structure and organization. It is worth remembering that no culture should be considered superior to another. What exists are cultural differences between the various groups. When making value judgments about some aspect external to your culture, we may be being ethnocentric. Ethnocentrism occurs when we consider our habits or behavior superior to those of others and this can generate unfollowed prejudice. Okay, now that we really know what culture is, we need to know what is the Maori culture. I hope you like it. Famous persons like Dwayne Johnson and Jason Momoa have taken attitudes from Maori culture to the mainstream of Hollywood. Dwayne made reference to the Hakka in his movie, Fast and Furious, Robs and Shaw, and Momoa also made the Hakka during the premiere of his most famous movie, Aquaman. But after all, who are the Maoris? The first Maori settlers arrived in New Zealand from Polynesia in the 13th century. The first Maori people descended from the same Polynesian, Micronesian and Melanesian colonizers who crossed the Pacific to inhabit islands like Hawaii. This ancient itinerant past caused the Maori people to adopt an attitude of reference and amazement at the sea and perhaps explains why many of their myths contain themes of travel, loss and separation. The Maori culture is very rich and interesting. They are of extreme spirituality, everything present in nature is sacred, represents gods and is alive. A mountain, for example, can be the sister of another. Everything that exists has a spirit called mana, even manufactured objects. If mana is touched by an altruist people, it can go away and bring disgrace to a tree. Even a simple lizard is considered an emissary of the widow god and can sneak into your body to suck its vital energy. Other traditions like Onji, which is the official Maori greeting. You touch the other person's nose with their own. Not to be confused with Henji, which is the traditional food of New Zealand made in steam under the earth, is also a Maori tradition. And now we're gonna talk about the famous Hakka. The Hakka is a war mantra in which a dance is rehearsed to scare away the enemy or say that you are not afraid of him. In a coordinated dance and cadenced words is sung in the stroke tone, cause the enemy to approach and face him. Haka says something that can be interpreted more or like this. Come to me, look into my eyes, I'm ready for you, I'm not afraid of you. Facial expressions, faces, muscle strength and arm movements are used. Posture of those about to throw, a spare and tongue completely out of the mouth in a threatening way. 
Some people say that the meaning of the tongue out is only to threaten, others say it was an invitation to dinner, in which the enemy would be the main course. Another important thing is the Morai. Morai is a kind of temple and meeting place for the Maoris. It is a sacred place where you must leave your shoes off and enter only with permission. Respect and ceremonies must be carried out to the letter. In these places, dates, parties, wendes, funerals are celebrated, besides meetings of the village chiefs. Everything important for that community is decided in a morai. The entrance is always decorated with sculptures and beautiful drawings in red painted wood, representing the tribes and spirituality. And what about the arts of the Maoris? Maoris are masters in the arts and their specialty is wood carving. Maori art is very developed and geometric drawings with spiritual meanings predominate. Maori dance and music are present all the time and they even sing at burials. The songs in general tell the story of a person or a legend. They are beautiful to listen to. About the food, in parts of New Zealand where there are thermal activities, handy with a typical vegetable based dish is timid. Kumara or sweet potato from the tropics was brought by the Polynesians to New Zealand, where it's adapted very well in the North Island. The Kumara is one of the main ingredients of Maori dishes. These foods and dance shows can be seen and enjoyed by tourists. Objects and amulets in the form of pendants are widely used by the Maori and can be found in several souvenir stores. The tattoos for the Maori have a meaning of status and family and tribe story. Traditionally, they are made from poverty on the face and mainly on the chain of a woman and the arm of man. In the end, Maori mythology is rich in details and difficult names for us, but it's worth knowing a little about it because it is a way to understand some customs and beliefs there. As in most ancient mythologies, it involves many familiar questions and dramas. An essential character in Maori culture is Maui Tiki Tiki, a demigod who played several adventures in local stories. Even the creation of the North and the South Islands is his responsibility. According to the legend, Maui stubbornly hid in a fishing canoe of his older brothers. In the middle of the trip, he revealed himself to the annoyance of the big ones. To everyone's surprise, Maui caught a giant fish. When he returned to the people of Haiwaki, the mystical land of the Maori people, he shared the fish with his brothers. It was so big that it became the North Island. The South Island in Maui's canoe. The Maori names for the islands of New Zealand, Aotearoa, worth remembering, are Teika Amaui, the fish from Maui, to the North Island, and Tewaka Amaui, the canoe from Maui, to the South Island. Well, today we learn about another sensational culture that is not known by many people and is not as a gym word as the Greek or Egyptian cultures. It was a unique opportunity to learn about something that is not taught in the schools. So that's it. See you later.